that component, that's vitally important, okay? All right, number seven, stays in regular communication with the victory group coach who has been assigned to them, remaining accountable to them for their vision assignments. We will be letting you know that um, before the group starts, who your coach will be, who your victory coach will be. You will have their name and their number, and you, you will know them, okay? It's only going to be a select group of people, so it won't be. You'll know. You know them already, okay? If I, if I told you they're going to be, you would know them. So you'll know who your coach is, and um, they will be there as a coach to you. They will be there um, to hold you accountable, make sure you're doing your part. They'll be a help to Sister Chelsea because if you're not turning your reports in, you know, she can call the coach who can talk to you or whatever the case is. But they're going to be there mainly as a support, as an assistance to help you um, make your group a success. Everybody got it? Okay. Number eight, accepts the responsibility of encouraging and helping to equip all the group members in their group to become facilitators. So we don't want it to end just with y'all. My heart is we have 25 to 40 groups that will start this year. And we're probably going to have about 15 that's going to kick it off. Okay? Great. Great, but we want, before the year is over, we want another 10, 15, 20 groups to start. So everybody comes to your group as they're enjoying it. We want you to encourage them. You can go through training and start your own group. Does that mean I got to leave this group? You don't have to leave, but you're not required to stay. Everybody got it? Okay. All right. Number nine, all facilitators must meet the established helps ministry guidelines. In other words, you have to be a tither. Does anybody understand that? If you are not a tither, you cannot do this. Okay, if you're not a tither. I'm gonna tell you you're not saved. Really, I feel like I'm telling you that. If you gotta be a tither. You must be serving. You must be helps minister qualified. You must be serving in this church somewhere in an approved ministry for servant. Okay, Does everybody got it. Everybody understand? If you're, you know, we just had a meeting today. You know, we're gearing up to monitor you tithing when you kick into being a small group leader. So you must be tithing and you must be helps minister qualified where you are serving now in a, sm in a Sunday morning ministry, serving somewhere in the ministry. Okay, approved by helps ministry through Elder Michelle. Everybody got it? And there's zero tolerance for that. You don't tithe, you're done. Okay, you don't serve. You think, well, this is my serving, your small group. That's not an approved you know, that's an extracurricular activity. <laughs> Anybody got it? Okay. Number 10, receives ongoing monthly leadership training. Is everybody here clear that part of the requirement is you must commit to the first Saturday um, of every month from 5 to 8 to be with me and Pastor Aisha? Does everybody understand that? Yes? Okay, we told you that orientation. First Saturday of the month, you must now. From 5 to 6 is small group training. From 6 to 8 is our monthly leadership training that anybody in leadership, we train intensively um, um, for that. Does everybody got it? And so you'll be required the first Saturday month to be with me. Now, you know, if you can't make it because you have to be out of town, that's understandable. If you can't make it because somebody is getting married, somebody died, how many of you can't control that stuff? But everything you can control, we ask you to control so that you don't miss that monthly leadership, leadership training. They are vitally important. The lessons we teach are awesome. They're, it's vitally, vitally important. Have I got it? So you have to be there. There's not an exception on that. But we do understand things come up sometimes. You can't be there. But um, it's a requirement. Have I got it? Number 11, guards their heart against covetedness, competition, jealousy, and the temptation to use their position for personal gain through manipulation. Have I got it? Nobody's competing with anybody. Amen. Okay, nobody's competing. You might have two people in your group. Somebody else starts the same time. They got eight people, 12 people. There's no competition. Those are the two God has given me. Praise the Lord. Everybody got it? And I don't use the position for personal gain through manipulation. Number 12, remains trustworthy, loyal, and above reproach, always being found faithful to the ministry and disciplines of victory in Christ, Christian Center Vision. Everybody got it? Okay, you got it? So that's what you do within the vision. Now, let's avoid the pitfalls of deception and rebellion, okay? 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And again, if you have some questions, kind of hold them. We'll be done shortly, and we'll take your questions. But it's important that you understand that. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, avoiding the pitfalls of deception and rebellion. It says, least Satan should get what? An advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, we have to avoid the pitfalls of deception. Now, letter A, it says, remaining aware of satanic and fleshly deception 
is critical, okay? You have to understand that Satan is out for you. You got it? That's not a fill in the blank. That's a statement. Okay, number one, write this in. Leadership is always a target for Satan. Leadership is always a target for Satan. Always, always, always. You got to understand that. You accepting this, you get a bullseye on your back because he hates the fact that you'd want to make an impact on anybody. He'd rather you just you go to heaven by yourself, but don't try to take anybody with you, okay? Leadership is always a target for Satan. Number two, write this in, rebellion is so subtle and must be nipped in its budding stage. Rebellion is so subtle and must be nipped in its budding stage. Rebellion is so subtle, must be nipped in its budding stage. We don't put up with rebellion here. We don't. I ain't scared of nobody. I ain't, I ain't worried if people stay or leave because I rebuke them. We don't put up with it. I don't just pull people up before the church, but I will. You got it? I'll address things from the pulpit if I have to. You, say, you saw me do it this past weekend, if, you know, and that was general. That was light, okay? But the point is rebellion will destroy a ministry, and that will never happen here. Everybody got it? But it must be nipped in its budding stage. So we have very low tolerance for rebellion. If we find out that a person is not sticking to the system, trying to do their own thing, group's over. Group's done. No discussion. No, pastor, oh, I thought it's over. It is done because we trained you. We told you to stick to the system. We gave you the tools. There is no excuse on it. You follow me? And some of the most rebellious people are parents that don't want their kids to be rebellious. You follow me? Well, how many know in this, in this house, in this church, everybody here are spiritual kids. We're the spiritual parents. It's the same principle, okay? But um, it, it's very subtle. Satan starts out with rebellion a person with a thought, just a thought. And then I reason within myself, and I then begin to justify. Everybody got it? You got to nip it in you, right? Everybody in here will be tempted to rebel in some area of your life somewhere. Amen? And you got to nip it in its budding stages. Number three. It takes all of our spiritual discernment to protect the vision. It takes all of our spiritual discernment to protect the vision. Everybody got it? It takes all of our spiritual discernment to protect the vision. And that's what we got to do. We got to protect the vision. We got to protect the vision. At all costs, protect the vision. Okay? Protect the vision. You follow me? You know, um, we met with our spiritual mom and for breakfast, we had a wonderful time with her. And uh, one of the things that was on her heart that she said is, you know, her mentality was she was wondering where her, um, Pastor Lamont and her, their spiritual son's going to step up and, and be carriers of the legacy of Pastor Lamont. Or where we're going to leave now that he was no longer there. And, um, you know, it was, she was like almost in tears, not with us, but God, who's, who's going to carry it on? And, I, you know, I told her, that's our job. That's our job. We'll carry it on. You follow me? Because we're to be provision for his vision. We'll carry it on. His legacy will never die because this church will never forget Lamont D. McLean. Never, ever, ever. You know, he, he is and he will be the spiritual father of this house. He doesn't have to be on the planet. How I many of your dad passes away? Still your dad. You follow me? Yeah. I'm not going to get another spiritual father. I don't, you know, if my, I don't get another. I have a grandfather, Pastor Godot. Yeah, but, you know, we have another mentor. We have a, few, you know, a couple other mentors. But I, I don't need anybody to replace him. Anybody got it? Okay, and so, you know, it's the same thing. We're protecting the vision of Living Faith Christian Center. We are protecting the vision of Victory in Christ Christian Center, protecting it at all costs. And with you, a small group, your way of protecting it is not allowing rebellion to creep into you. Everybody got it? Okay. All right. Letter B, recognizing the fiery darts is critical to satanic attack. Satan systematically pulls you outside of the will of God, systematically. He has a system to do it. You got it? Go to James 1, please, verse 13. He has a system to do it. And uh, we got to hurry now. I got to hurry and get it done. He has a system. And you got to understand it. Satan doesn't just come up to you and say, hey, you want to get outside the will of God? <laughs> Don't do that. He's systematic. He has a, he's systematic because he has a system that's proven to work. He's pulled the best away. Okay? James 1, verse 13. Let no man say when he's what? tempted i'm tempted of who god for god cannot be tempted with evil why can't god be tempted with evil because there's no evil in him okay neither tempteth he any man god cannot tempt you with evil because there's no evil in him but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed then when lust has conceived it bringeth forth sin see all god all the enemy wants you to do is get pregnant with lust 
because lust will conceive at some point. So all he wants you to do is he wants you to allow him to impregnate you with lust. Because once it's in you, unless you abort it, it's going to come forth. You got it? When it has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. You see that? Now look at the next thing there. To be drawn away is to gradually become distracted so that your focus is lost. That's the definition of black backsliding. You follow me? You just get drawn away gradually. Hey, y'all remember, you ever been drawn away from your prayer life? Your study life? How about your, your worship? Church attendance? You just get drawn away gradually. You follow me? And then you become distracted, and now your focus is off. Okay? Number one, let's look how he does this. Number one, write this in. He challenges the right of authority to give direction. He challenges the right of authority to give direction. You know, Sister Debbie, when she first came in, this is kind of wrong context. When she first came in, she looked at me and Pastor Aisha, and she said, what can those two young people tell me? Now, she wasn't being rebellious, but she was just like, you know, what can they tell me? Now, how many know you weren't being rebellious? I don't think you were. But watch, watch. She had to change her thinking. I know it's not an age thing. It's an authority thing. Because when she can look at us as the spiritual authority that God has set in her life, she can receive direction. Everybody got it? So if I, Because I've had to rebuke Sister Debbie different times. You know, if I, I've had to rebuke her, and she's never once said, I'm older than you. Who do you think you are? She, she's always received it as her man and woman of God because she, it's the way she looks at us. You follow that? You, you follow me? Now, I, I will spiritually spank her if I need to, you know, and put her in timeout. You need to go in timeout, timeout. You know, but it's a good example because she's older. She's old. You know, she had to make that change. Everybody got it? And she's done a very good job at it. Number two, number two, he magnifies the imperfections in authority. I should teach this to the whole church. He magnifies the imperfections in authority. That is why authority never needs to make you think they walk on water. Because they are imperfect people. And, you know, if I try to make you think I walk on water, I'm giving Satan ammunition. Because when my imperfections come out, which they do and will and, you know, continue to do, it'll, you know, it's, it's a magnification thing. But if you come across the way I am, I'm real, I got issues, you know, then your mindset is he's no different than me. You find, honor, honor your man and woman God. Yes, but understand they're no different. Everybody got it? Okay, but he'll try to get you to magnify. The imperfections in who's in authority over you does not negate their authority over you. Because God did not give them authority over you because they were perfect. He gave them authority over you because he called them to be an authority over you. Because all of us need authority over all of us. Amen. Okay, number three, he connects you with disgruntled others. He connects you with disgruntled others to feed negative thoughts to you. I think I'm going to teach this in the whole church at some point. <laughs> really, yeah. Matter of fact, let's end now. I'll teach y'all the rest on Sunday. He connects you with disgruntled others to feed negative. I'm going to teach this when I teach you how to spiritually protect your home. I'm going to add this in. You see, when I give this on that Sunday, y'all act like you never heard it before. The way you're responding now, I'm like, this is good. Don't sit there and say, I know this. Don't say, number four, he's going to say this. No, just. <laughs> he connects you with disgruntled others to feed negative thoughts to you. Satan will always connect you with somebody who is fed up just like you. And, you know, are you following me? And feed negative thoughts. You got it? Okay, you got to understand, this is how he draws us away. Okay, gradually. Do y'all have that one I just gave you? Okay, number four, he minimizes, he minimizes the consequences of disobedience. He minimizes the consequences of disobedience to birth an insensitivity to sin. He minimizes the consequences of disobedience to birth an insensitivity to sin. I should just wrote these in for y'all. Y'all gonna write faster for me. Write faster. We're just about done. But it'll, it'll affect you writing it. He minimizes the consequences of what? Disobedience. To birth an insensitivity to sin. Do you have that? To birth an insensitivity to sin. So if he can get you to minimize the consequences then it'll, it'll turn around and birth an insensitivity to the sin. You follow me? Somebody's going to have an affair he does that with. He minimizes the consequences, you know, of how it'll affect their family and all that stuff, and it birthes this insensitivity to sin. You know, you going you know, you fed up on your job, and you're going to quit it. You know good and doggone well you can't do that yet, but he'll minimize the consequences. What about you're not going to have no money? You're not going to eat. 
Fast is over Sunday. <laughs> that was cool for the last 21 days. We fasting. You know, it's over Sunday. Okay. Number five, he disconnects you from righteous influences. Oh, man. He disconnects you from righteous influences. That's not all of it. Just get that real quick. He disconnects you from righteous influences. You got that part? I write this in. You become confused with who the enemy is. That's why he wants to disconnect you from your church family. He t- disconnects you from righteous influences, and you become confused with who the enemy is. You begin, begin looking at the person that God put in your life to be a blessing as an enemy, and the enemy as a blessing. You follow me? Yeah, right? And you guys, I'm really, I'm talking to you now because you step into leadership. He's going to try to do this to you. He tries to do this to me and Pastor Aisha and the elders. At this church, we know this. This is something that's said behind four walls. If the enemy is going to divide this church, it's not coming from the chairs. It's coming from the leadership. Division in this church is not going to come from Sister Susan who comes on Sundays and Wednesdays. It's going to come from the upper level leadership, the elders, the ministers. You got it? And some of the other key you know, people in leadership that we put in in high places. All right, everybody got it? Number six. Number six, Satan helps you fabricate new instructions. Satan helps you fabricate new instructions to justify rebellion. Satan helps you fabricate new instructions to justify rebellion. There's more. That's just the first sentence. I gave you two lines, right? Satan helps you fabricate new instructions to justify rebellion. You got that part? Write this in. You renounce and retract what you say God told you. You renounce and retract what you say God told you. Sure. Satan helps you fabricate new instructions to justify rebellion. You renounce and retract what you say God told you. You, Did it help? Got it? Okay. Do I need to say that again or everybody got it? Yes? Okay, I had this happen to me. You know, um, you know, one time somebody said to us, you know, um, you know, when people come in, we really make sure they understand, you know, that God, you know, wants us to be your spiritual father and mother. Y'all, y'all hear us say that God's not interested in simply us being your pastors, but spiritual parents, because pastors are more interested in your. I mean, parents are interested in your destiny. Pastors many times are simply interested in what you're doing in the four walls. Okay, and, um, you know, we had a person, you know, you're my spiritual parents, you're my spiritual parents, and uh, then they kind of just lost it. And, um, you know, um, I told them, I said, you know, am I your spiritual father? And the person couldn't even look at it. Normally when they talk, they, you know, eye to eye contact. They just kind of put their head down. No, you're not my spiritual father. I'm like, you can't even look at me. But how many know that's fabricating new instruction? Trying to, you know, justify now saying God told you something different. How many know if we're your spiritual father, if we're your spiritual father and mother, it don't change because you're mad. And how many know, how many know, you know, even if you leave your parents' house disgruntled, they're still your parents. And good parents will always say you can come back. They'll never say you. Once you leave, you're out of here. That's that's jacked up parents. Good parents, you know, know you leaving ahead of time. It's about natural. So, you know, this is your house. You follow me? Why? Because when you hit a wall and jacked up, I want you to call. You follow me? But my point is here, you know, that will happen. You follow me? That, that'll that happen. That happens with people in church. They, you know, this is my set place. But because things will happen the way they want, now they want to say this is not my set place. Well, somebody's double-minded and it can't be God. Especially if we don't pressure you to make this your set place. Either you said it was. Now, well, I missed it. No, you didn't. You're just trying to ch- fabricate new instruction. Okay? All right. Number seven. Number seven. He pr- Now, get this good. He prompts you to recruit others. I'm talking about Satan now. He prompts you to recruit others. If you just keep this list in front of you, it'll keep rebellion out of you. He prompts you to recruit others in your unrighteousness. He prompts you to recruit others in your unrighteousness. I'm going to wait there. There's more. Okay, there's more. He prompts you to recruit others in your unrighteousness. You got it? To ease your consciousness about rebellion. He prompts you to recruit others in your unrighteousness to ease your consciousness, or your conscience rather, about rebellion. So when somebody's in rebellion, they'll look to get some others with them. You follow me? Because if I can find some others that 
um, are in rebellion just like me, it supposedly in their mindset takes it off of me and puts it back on you. There's nothing wrong with us. It's something wrong with you. You follow me? That's why when people, and if you ever do this to me, you'll see it in action, come to me and go, you know, if you ever come to me and go, you know, everybody in the group was unhappy, I'll say, who's everybody? Because many times everybody is you, or it's you and one person. How many know you and one person and there's 12 of us, that's not everybody, that's two. You follow me? You know, you follow me? You know, they, now some of my leaders have done it. Pastor, there's a problem in this church, there's a problem in this church, you know, you know everybody's unhappy. Who's everybody? We got, you know, over 500 people. Who's everybody? Four of them. That's not everybody. That's four. <laughs> you, fo you follow what I'm saying? Okay. I've had people tell me this, you know, you know, you know, you said this and, and, you know, it was wrong and everybody's in agreement. So I come out on the platform and say it was brought to my attention that, uh, you know, I said this. Did y'all feel that? How many felt that? Birds chirping. You know, you follow me? No, it wasn't everybody. It was you. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So I'm saying that. So even in your group, if, you know, a group comes and you know, you know, everybody's disgruntled. And everybody feels we just need to do something else. Who everybody? Now, if it is everybody, how many know? They off, you stay on. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay? But rebellion will always look to recruit others to ease its consciousness of a rebellion. Now, how many know you can recruit a thousand people? You're still rebellious. Y'all hear me? Rebellion does not get its way. You call it what it is. Y'all follow me? Okay, y'all saw that with Moses, Mo, you know, remember Moses and Korah, Korah wanted to go recruit all these people and thought now, you know, you're not the only one that hears from God. But the bottom line is that's true. But concerning this vision, yes, I am the only one uh, in this house. Pastor Aisha, nobody else. The elders don't hear. The ministers don't hear. Nobody else here in this house. We hear you follow me now for your own personal life. You hear. But in this house for this vision, we hear. And what did God do? God said, you know, God said, call him outside. <laughs> And God gave him a chance. Some of y'all need to step over here. Swallowed him up. You, you follow what I'm saying? So you can recruit all the rebellious people you want. It's still rebellion and God's still going to deal with you. Everybody got it? All right, number eight. Number eight. Satan sets the stage. These eight men will change your life. I'm telling you. Satan sets the stage with an event. <laughs> he sets the stage with an event to push you over the edge into open rebellion. He sets the stage with an event to push you over the edge into open rebellion. When Y'all got it? Satan sets the stage with an event to push you over the edge into open rebellion. When you're rebellious and you're looking for a reason, he will give you one. You follow me? You're rebellious and you're just mad. You're just fed up and somebody cuts in line at the tape table. How many know? Just gave you a reason. That one person cut in front of the line, and now the whole church don't got no love. It was just one person cut in front of the line. You follow me? You got me? I do an illustration, and I hit the person. And there it is. See, he always hitting somebody. He always, that's why I don't sit on the front. I sit in the back. He always hitting something. L.D. Alonda normally says hi to you. Normally says hi, and this one day I told her from the office, L.D., I need you to go do this right now. Don't talk to nobody. Go do it. So L.D. Alonda comes storming out the office, and she normally says hi. But this time, she was on direct orders. I said, don't talk to nobody. She didn't say hi. You're like, see, see, even the elders don't talk to nobody. <laughs> How many know Satan will give you a reason? He'll give you a reason, okay? I was, it was dramatic effect. You were storming out for me, going to do what, you know, I should do. Y'all follow me? You got to understand that. You got to understand. If, hear me, if I'm looking for a reason to leave the church on that, looking for a reason, hear me, Satan will give you one. And if I'm in a mentor, I'm looking for a reason, you need to slow your roll because that means you, you're not supposed to be leaving that point looking for a reason. There was a guy here one time and, um, you know, he, um, guy, he was, he's very gifted as an actor. Very gifted, extremely gifted. And um, he would be in our plays, extremely gifted. And he was like, Pastor, my heart is to go to, to um, Hollywood. My heart is to go to Hollywood and be a, an actor for God. And I'm like, that is cool, man. That's great. And he's like, I want to go now. I'm like, you're not ready. I said, if you, you're stepping into the devil's playground, you're not ready to go. You've barely been saved a year. You're going to go out there and think you're going to make it. You, you need to stay here, get mature, then go. Well, he, you know, he, he said he was going to do it. He didn't, he didn't turn around and take, you know, take our advice. Went out there, got off. We saw him on TV. He was on Law and Order one time playing a bad boy. I'm like, there he is right there. Law and Order, he is off. He is off now. 
You follow me? He's, you know, he's back in this area. He is off. And Shai God sets it up. He ran into one of our members trying to talk stuff, and the members started talking what they're learning here. And he's like, where do you, where do you go? And uh, she said, I go to Victory Christ Christian. He said, Pastor John Onisha? She's like, yeah, he put his head down. Because he knows. You can't talk no stuff to our members. They talk too well. He knows. But he's <laughs> off. Are you thinking he's a, he's a, you know, he's this God, not a small G. He's this God, and nobody can touch him and all that. When I see him, I'm going to beat him down. Because I'm like, you know better. You follow me? But my point is, he was looking for a reason. Satan gave it to him. Gone. You follow me? Okay. Y'all understand? What I, is this making sense? Okay. All right. Things don't just happen. They are planned. Good or bad, they are planned. Okay. That's why you trust your man and woman of God unless they're goofy. You have to have sheep that love you, pastors rather, that love you because every sheep, every sheep can get goofy. And when God gives you good pastors, you trust them. You don't follow them blind, but you trust them. Because if, if Satan gets me off, I need to say I'm going to defer to my man and woman of God so I'm not off. Amen. That's why we have pastors. That's why we have because how many know we are sheep first too? Amen. All right, let us see. Proven track record that no weapon formed will prosper. It says, it is refreshing and encouraging as we look back since our inception in 2000. That date is getting further and further away. That we have been victorious over all types of attacks against the ministry. We know for certain that God has his hand of guidance and protection on this ministry, and no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. And the church said, Amen. despite what others have maliciously done, the continued blessing of God on our lives is our vindication. Number one, and this is, you, didn't, you don't have to write this, right? Number one, persecution has not stopped victory in Christ Christian sin. Y'all see that? Number two, rebellion in leadership has not stopped victory in Christ Christian Center. Number three, desertion has not stopped victory in Christ Christian Center. Some folks that we, we were using it just got up and rolled. You follow me? Got up, you know, rolled. We started program, they're gone. You follow me? Desertion hasn't stopped us. When God's hand is on something, you leave, hear me, the ministry will keep going. He'll replace you. You got it? Act like you were never there. Okay? Number four, betrayal has not stopped victory in Christ Christian Center. There are people that are talking about this ministry right now. Talking, okay? Talking bad. People that talking, I mean, putting their lips on this ministry. How many know you don't do that? But in spite of that, we're still growing. In spite of that, people are coming in, getting saved, joining the church. We're still growing. It's, it's an indicator God's hand is on this ministry. Everybody got it? Letter D, we rest in the awesome promises of God's commitment to us. Number one, we're not going to look at these scriptures. Take a time. You can, they're just a reference point. Matthew 16, 18. Y'all see that? Write this in. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Satan cannot defeat this ministry. It's not going to happen. This ministry is thriving and growing and blessing folk and doing what God has called to do. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Number two, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Put that in. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. I don't care if somebody's planning a scheme in a back room somewhere against this ministry. It will not prosper. Okay? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Not going to happen. You got it? And then Psalm number three, Psalms 127, one, write this in, except the Lord build the house. Okay? Except the Lord build the house. Okay, and it goes on to say they labor in vain to build it. Okay, so if God, how I many know if God builds the house, it's going to get built. Okay, if God builds it, it's going to get built. I don't care what happens, it's going to get built. And ladies and gentlemen, that has been, if somebody wants to know what's the secret to our growth and our success, we are letting God build this thing. There is no personal agenda. There is no man-made flesh put on display. This is God's church. This is his vision, and we let him build it. You follow me? I'm not trying to make a big name for myself. I don't care. I just, want, I just want to minister to God's people. And as we do that, God will build this house and build it rock solid. And what I'm really after, you know, and you guys have heard me say this before, I think, I'm not really even after, I'm not even building it for this generation anymore. This generation is benefiting from us trying to build it for the next generation. I'm trying to build this for my son and, and so forth for the, his generation. You follow me? Because I'm real concerned. This is why. I'm real concerned when I see church today. I'm real concerned. Their church is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's so many off agendas and so forth. And I know, uh, you know, unless Jesus, you know, unless he comes, you know, we're not going to be here. Us, we're not going to be here. They're, you know, all those kids on that side, that's victory of, of today and tomorrow. And I'm building it for them. I'm setting things in place so that when our time is up in our generation, 
has gone on. There is something, there's a system set in place for the next generation. You follow me? You got it? That's what I'm after. Now, I'm not really building it so much for this generation. This generation is being benefited, but I'm thinking about victory where it's going to be 15, 20, 30, 40 years from now. You follow me? Which means we can't get so comfortable with us doing things the same way. You follow me? Because next generation is a different way to win them. You follow me? Okay? And so if we all become generational-minded, Again, what you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. If we become generational-minded, then all of a sudden now God will bless us, which means this church can never get stuffy. You follow me? Seven years ago, you know, when uh, we were, uh, what, 32? We started? Yeah, so we were 32. Yeah, I mean, no, that, that was young. 39 is young. But I'm like, I'm 11 years short of 50. <laughs> Pastor Aisha is closer to me. Amen. All right, but watch, I don't want this to become a stuffy old place. You follow me? I don't want it to become a place where it dies off and, you know, the, the older saints are there. You know, it's about 20 of us. We're there. But the, the younger generation can't relate or any of that. This church has to stay on cutting edge. You follow me? And be a place that all generations, the older can come in and get the word and get their needs met. You know, you know the younger generation can. Young people. That's my heart. You follow me? That this church always stays. I think I'm going to be able to stay cool. I'm going to be 78 and be cool. Stay cool and young and vibrant. You follow me? Huh? Yeah. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. Praise God for that. So that's, that's where we are. Next week, we're going to dive into now how to actually run the group, how to facilitate the group. We wanted to deal with y'all tonight on the role of you as the facilitator. Do y'all have a better understanding of what we expect of you? Okay. Next week, we're going to deal with what we expect from the group in terms of how to actually facilitate the group. Okay, and I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to give you everything that me and Pastor Aisha can give you so you don't even second guess. We're going to give you some dialogue stuff, how to say certain things in your group and so on and so forth. We'll have that for you next week. Okay, questions before we, we um, end for tonight. Questions, ma'am. We don't need that for that because we don't need that for that. Oh, you know, give it to her since she did that. No, no, give it to her. Give it to her. No, no, now you got to do it. Now you got to do it. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Will you be giving us the dates because that kind of flew by me? You know, like you said, there's a meeting of this and there's a meeting of that. And, like, you know, will you? It's only the first Saturday. Just the first Saturday? Just I first Saturday. You said something else after that, like mm. the leadership group. No, the first, the... the first Saturday, 5 to 6 o'clock, is small group training. Okay. 6 to 8 is a leadership training. Oh, so it's that's right a... behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's just, so it's 5 to 8. Small group leaders will be with us. Five to, eight, five to 6, we're going to be focusing on small group. That's when we're going to be showing the DVD for that month. Five to eight. No, no, no. Five, five to eight is small group and leadership. Five to six together. Five to six. Five to five to six here. First Saturday. Small group. And then six to eight. You can stay in your same chair. You got to get up and go nowhere. Same seat. Okay. So it's, yeah. So it's the first Saturday. First Saturday. And so the five to six is going to be there's certain other principles I want to pour into our small groups, but what, that's also going to be where we're going to actually show you the recorded DVD message that Pastor Aisha and I did. The 10 minute, it's going to be a 10 minute, okay, DVD um, lesson around the sermon series. And at the end of it, we're going to pose the questions we want the group to talk about. You'll get to see that and ask us questions off of it so that you're completely straight going into your group. So that'll be, so it's only going to be 60 minutes once a month. So I don't want to bring you out multiple days. It's going to be small group training, 5 to 6, and then leadership training, 6 to 8. Okay? In leadership, with leadership is two hours. Leadership, we get together. I teach a leadership lesson. I'm getting, I'm getting tighter on my teaching them. I did all that. I'm getting tighter, but uh, they give me an hour. It doesn't always take an hour. We don't, it, if we get done before 8, we're out, but it's 6 to 8. I teach a leadership lesson uh, from 6 to 7. Then people can do question and answer about the lesson. And then we deal with any administrative stuff for the church with all the leaders. And then we're out. Okay? Okay, so that's what happens. All right, I think you were next. On the, um, on the groups being 8 to 12, let's say you're, you're at your number 12 or somewhere around there. How do you control, are we going to have the people come actually through the church to get into the group? Let's say a neighbor hears something. He says, hey, I want to come to your group. You say, yeah, come on. Or no, nah, I really want you to go to the church and then see what I'm No, 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 no. They go. come to the group. They come, they come to the group. They don't have to be a member of this church. What, when I say they don't have to be a member, that um, if they are in another church and connected, we don't want them to really be a member. 
if they're connected to another church, meaning we, you know, we don't. This is for our church family, unbelievers, unchurched. They don't have a church home. They're looking for a church. We want them now. Somebody that belongs to a church, they can come visit. They can come, you know, we're not standing, trying to stop. But we, if it goes beyond 12, it gets out of hand. So we want it to be um, our church family. But then if there's unsaved people, a friend that's unsaved or unchurched, we want them to, you know, be part of the group. They don't have to ever come to the church. We want them to have an opportunity to come if they, because they need a church home. But they, you know, it's not about you got to come to the church first. Come to the group. Let the love of Jesus be on them. But if you have a friend that goes to another church, they're in, they're involved in their church and so forth. I don't want them that are connected in the body of Christ to come into a group and take up a spot that our church family can't get in or an unsaved person can't get in. But then the whole thing is we want people to start their own groups. So. You know, you get two people to start out of your group. Now I got two spots to put somebody else in. Okay, so that's how we want it. But they, if they want to stay in the group, they can. But they're not required to stay in the group to teach a group. Okay. Okay. Different subject. Um, the only one that I see a conflict is uh, July four is on a Friday this year. Okay. And um, do you have any plans on going out of town, or you plan on running it the first weekend? I don't. What do we normally do for um, for um, July well, July fourth? We haven't talked about that yet. We have not had it, um, depending, because we know people do different things. Um, I don't like canceling, and so it, you know, I did one time, I asked our leaders, how many of you are going to be here, you know, going to be around? And uh, because sometimes if July 4th falls on a Monday, you know, people do cookouts on Monday and so forth, so I'm like, I'm not canceling it if, you know, everybody's going to be around. But if it, depending on, with that being on, July 4th is on a Friday, you said? You look ahead, man. That's good. Friday, I don't know yet. We met, there's a chance we might not have it. There's a chance we might not have it um, because it's there. But like, if it's been on a Monday, we've still had a group because um, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to cancel it, and you're not cooking out till Monday. So, but for that, for people might not be, they might be celebrating on Saturday, and so we'll, we'll have a better feel. There's a chance we might not have it. And if we cancel it, we don't have it another time in the month. For the most part, we just don't have it. Um, that month. Sometimes we have said we're not having it on the first, we'll have it on the second, but I don't like bouncing back and forth because I want people to know this is when it is. Okay? Okay. We'll, we'll finish up. Go ahead. Um, the training DVDs, will they be put out on a monthly basis, weekly? The DVDs of the, the lesson? Yes. They'll be monthly unless somebody's meeting more than monthly. We're going to get a, a feel for the groups when they're meeting. If somebody's meeting, the bare minimum you can meet is monthly. I would love for people to meet weekly, bi-weekly, and if somebody's meeting bi-weekly, we're actually, depending on how many, we're going to do an extra, another DVD lesson. If they're going, you know, if somebody's going bi-monthly, they're doing twice a month, we're going to do a, another recording for that group so they have it, okay? So it, it depends on how the groups are, okay? Good question. Okay. We're um, once, uh, well, you said when we had an open house for, uh, uh, to announce our groups, and when it be, uh, and then when when they get to be eight and twelve uh, people, like say for instance, we had an open house and twelve people said they want to uh, be a part of the group. Right. So then we, when we do, uh, uh, had that on that date when uh, we do have uh, our meeting, uh, maybe eight people, though, eight people or maybe six people shows up. Right. But then after that, uh, w we still have more people. Than, than 12 that wanted to uh, participate. Mm -hmm. So do we uh, uh, put them on a waiting list? Uh, do we put them on a waiting list mm -hmm. until we see, do we always, if we go over 12 people, do we put them on a waiting list? Uh, so just in case if uh, these people ain't showing up uh, consistently to be taking up space uh, where somebody else who truly want to do it uh, could come in and take, take up that spot? Yeah, no, you won't put them on a, a waiting list, but what what's going to happen is um, it's not a yeah. You won't you're not going to turn any way, people away for that night. You won't do that. But um, bottom line, we're going to want those people to be committed to that group, so that it's not a matter of people saying I want to be a part. It's a matter of are they coming? Okay. And so if let's say you have twelve, and then you have another three that want to be a part of the group, but those twelve out of those twelve, you got eight that are coming consistently, then the other four, you know, we're going to let those other three, you know, come. But you'll never turn somebody away for that one meeting time. You're never going to turn yeah, them away. Yeah, and, and you'll never you'll never turn anybody away, regardless. Even if for some reason, for maybe a month, you end up having 16 people come. What we're going to do then? We're going to look at okay, over that period of time, who is it that's coming to your group, yeah. and is there maybe somebody within your group that we can look at maybe starting a second group? 
is not that you'll turn anybody away. Yeah. So yeah, you won't kick we'll them to look the curb. at seeing if maybe we can start get somebody that maybe we can maybe recommend to start a group similar to yours and try to see if some of those people would be willing then to go to another group. So you'll never turn anybody away. We'll just look at that point at, at, at some point in the near future trying to, um, you know, maybe start another group, but you'll never, ever turn anybody away. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like you can't come, but we don't, we don't want it to grow past 12 people or 12 couples. That's just, that's just a signal that, okay, you're getting kind of large now. We need to see about if we can. Yeah, because it's hard to manage, you know, more than that. That's when, yeah, it'll be open, but that's when now you'll be communicating with Chelsea. And, you know, we'll, now we'll be saying, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to work And we'll look at who's in your group. Um, yeah. And looking at who's at who's who's a part of your group, and is if there is anybody in there that could possibly um, maybe start a group the next go around. And you'll be pushing it. You know, you'll be saying, "Hey, we need some folks that can start. You know, group whether it's a, a group just like this, same passion or separately, and that's going to work itself out. Because as people get involved, they're going to want to start a group. You know, when they get the passion aspect that this is about like passion. Because again, the groups are only going to be sixty minutes. Y'all got that? The, when I say that, sixty minutes for discipleship. That's it. 60 minutes, and I'm gonna I have it broken down. You're going to spend five minutes opening a prayer, five minutes. And it's not going to be the Lord led, five minutes, okay, five minutes. The lesson is, is going to be 10 minutes. There's going to jump, jump on the head, but it's time. It's 60 minutes, and when you're done, then you're going into your passion. Everybody follow me? Whatever it is, scrapbooking, whatever it is. So it's not going to be, it's not an hour and a half, it's 60 minutes. And when we're done, we're done, we meet again next time. You follow me? Okay, um, now. Um, so that it's going to be real tight in time, okay? Real tight in time, sixty minutes, and then we do our, you know, we do our um, passion, okay? Whatever our passion is, we we move into that because we don't want it to be all this teaching or whatever. It's not a matter of that. It's this is you know, relationship, fellowship, and discipleship, not just simply discipleship, okay? All right, and we'll get into that more next week. I'm giving you all the layout. Yes, ma'am. Question about the lesson. Um, you, when you spoke about being a good steward over, I guess my question is, my question is, I don't like the way my mic I know. sounds. That's why, you, that's why you need to speak into it. You said that the reason why you can be committed as pastors is because you want to be a good steward over what God has given you in this ministry. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get the passage on definition for commitment. Okay. Um, and I also want to get the passage on the Pastor Aisha uh, definition for rebellion because in the second part at the end when you talked about it, you talked about all of the definitions of what Satan does, but what exactly is rebellion Okay. In, from your, as pastors? Okay, okay. Here's a simplistic definition of commitment. Okay? <laughs> commitment is commitment when you're committed. But, you know, commitment, is, in a, another aspect, it's, it's, a, it's constantly holding your course in a direction, okay? We could, you know, we could define it a lot of ways, but commitment is I'm, I'm going to go in this direction, accomplish this goal, and I'm not going to stop till it's done, okay? But it must, yeah, as long as you're able to, to do it. Because there's a lot, you know, I, to me, I look at, you know, again, to commitment is you're, again, you're holding your course. You're doing what you agreed that you said that you were going to do um, outside of scenarios that you're not able to, to do them anymore, outside of you're not able to control. A lack of commitment would be, I just don't want to do it anymore. Or, you know, I just don't feel like it. That would be like, you know, lack of commitment. Because there are certain times or certain circumstances where people can't maybe uphold their commitment and it's legitimized. Um, so, you know, that would be, you know, I, I wouldn't want somebody to think that, okay, I'm not committed. Yeah. Because of, like, you know. It's a heart. Like, like you got pregnant. And now you got to take care of baby. You can't, oh. you know, maybe live up to the commitment that you established. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, um, but it's a heart condition. Yeah, you know, is. something happens and now you can't complete it. You're not completing it because of any fault of your own. Okay. But, you know, I like my definition. Commitment is commitment when I'm committed. But rebellion, um, I just, you know, was thinking about it. Rebellion is not submitting to authority uh, without a justifiable reason. 
okay? Because sometimes you have a justifiable read. Authority is trying to take you into sin, okay? That, um, you know, I, I follow you as you follow Christ. So, but not submitting to authority. The guidelines that we have set for the house, whether it be for the group, for this house, as well as to what but in just God's, in the, God's, God's house yeah, too. But in a simplistic, just, you know, regardless of whether in the house or not, not submitting because even to your husband, to your boss, not submitting to authority uh, without well, a justifiable I say the word, That's why I'm saying the word reason. of God. Everything yeah. that lines up within the word of God, not submitting to that, yeah. as well as any rules or regulations that we may have set within this house. Okay. Not submitting to authority without a justifiable cause. And that's, she gave you the deeper, that was deep, that's good. But the, yeah, bottom line is what she's saying, you know, the word. If I submit to the word, then I'll submit to anybody, you know, authority. But also, my submission to the word will tell me when I don't have to submit to you. You know, so that, that what you're saying is true, that's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, and because we, uh, we still got to get the uh, two interviews tonight, folks, so we got to hurry up. Well, we'll do just one tonight. Do, we'll do one, y'all really messing me up, man. Okay, these are, we'll go, these are the last three, okay? Go ahead. My question is about the Victory Group coach. Um, I don't know. I can only speak for me and how I got here. And because I took it to God, and he, he like I told you, that first night I was late because I didn't get confirmation until like quarter to seven mm -hmm. at night, and I was lounging, lounging in my pajamas. But... My question is this, how accessible is this coach going to be? Because I don't know how anyone else is feeling, but taking this type of responsibility on is a huge responsibility. So uh -huh. I got butterflies. When I think about it, sometimes I get nervous. I don't know if that's normal, uh -huh. you know, or am I supposed to feel that way or am I supposed to feel this great amount of confidence you know, but I feel more, uh, a little, it's a little nervous and a little scary to me because it is a huge responsibility. Maybe this is how it's impact me. Mm -hmm. So I need to know how accessible these coaches are going to be. Okay. Um, number one, it's normal. I feel that way every time I stand before y'all to preach. I got butterflies, my hands, every time. Now, people don't see it, you know, they don't see it. But if you ever touch my hands before I minister, they're sweaty. And I do this three times. I do it three, four times a week, every week. But because I understand how serious it is, ministering before God's people, and I can't do it without God. So I'm nervous. Every Sunday, between every Sunday, I done preached it at 7.30, 11.30. Palm sweaty, nervous, because, you know, it's, it's a serious, serious thing. So you should feel that way. That, the nervousness should be an indicator. It shows I need God. I'm depending on God. If my palms are ever not sweaty and I'm not nervous, I'm, I'm, something's wrong now because it means I no longer need him. I'm like, I got it, but I, I need God to do it, okay? Um, but the, the um, coaches will be very accessible, very, very accessible um, for, the, for um, the small group leaders, as well as Chelsea will be available, accessible too, okay? So yes, to answer your question, very accessible, okay? All right, who was the um, last one? Okay. Can I, can I just expound on one yeah. thing too I want to say, but don't worry about it. it, it it's the, the groups aren't that deep. Yeah. Don't make them any deeper. Than, than what they have to be. They're, they're, you don't have to make them that deep. But you shouldn't need the coaches, but so much. Um, hopefully, not unless you have some major issue that you need to discuss, you know, in between. Because remember, you're going to ha have us two once a month where you can ask questions mm -hmm. to us in your once a month sessions. But the one thing that I can encourage you, you know, like my husband said, you will get nervous and it is a big responsibility. But like I always said to my husband, when God told us to start this church, and I was like, I don't know if I want this. I'm scared. I'm nervous. That's a big responsibility. I said, you punk. No, I didn't say and that. And I'm <laughs> like, I, I, I just want to take. Is one. I just want to take care of my children and just be responsible for my children, not not a whole bunch of people that I don't even know how big they're gonna get. And 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 one thing he said, he said, you don't gotta worry about the people. You just gotta worry about being obedient to God and doing what God tells you to do every single day. And whatever God tells you to do, that will automatically take care of the people. And if you do that, the same thing with your group. Just hear the voice of God, follow the format that's been laid out, just do what God tells you to do, do what we told you to do, and leave it to God. And that will take away a lot of your worries, your cares, and your concerns, and you'll have peace. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Going back, here's, here's Pastor Aisha's commitment. She had surgery today. She here. That's her commitment. 
And I tried to get her to stay home. She's like, no. And I saw her wincing in pain. She's like, I'm fine. I'm going. You know, she had, she had you know, so, you know, it was minor, small, you know, but, uh, you know, I could, I was in the room with her and they went to cut her and I had to go out, you know, I had to, I had to go out, you know, I had to, you know, Jesus shed the blood so I don't have to see it in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, but, um, um, okay, who, who, who had to, was that? Okay, last question. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Well, oh, before you do, so yeah, the groups are going to be fun and easy. They're going to be laid back because of the passion. And we're doing the teaching. Oh, you got, you're going to facilitate, and we're going to deal with that next week. You're going to facilitate um, the questions that we give. So it's going to be laid back. It's going to go by real fast. You're going you're to actually be wanting more time. I know people can come back and say, Pastor, can we make it more than an hour? And I'm saying no, an hour. Because well, no, that's when you can then add on instead of maybe twice a month, you can have weekly. <laughs> yeah, but the, the dis- discipleship time is one hour. Okay, here's one of the keys. Y'all notice, you know, my, as I teach, when I, my teaching is not real long, and when I stop, people want me to keep going, and it, it entices them to come back. You follow me? Versus when it's real long, they're like, you know, I don't know if I'm coming back next week. I got enough to last me a month. So, you know. All right, last, last one. Yes. Um, hi. My question, <laughs> hi, Pastor. My question is, with the type of group that I am going to be involved in facilitating, what do I do if a man shows up? That's a good because, question. Because, you know, there might be a lot of people who say, you know, wow, this is really working. Maybe you might want to try. I mean, is it possible that, you know, I could, you know, maybe I could share, you know, with him what's going on with our group. But I, I really didn't want to. Well, if it's, no, but if your group is for women. Right. Because I'm saying that. Fine. But at first I thought you were saying, like, we're not going to just have all men or women. But I don't think that no, no, I no, would no, feel no. comfortable. Yeah, with no, 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 no. Some groups might be just for women. Okay, okay, so it is okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what I really Yeah, was absolutely. I and yeah, that's again it's the like passion, okay? But then you know you got Wayne. So Wayne will be there. <laughs> but no, some, you know, so no it's it's okay. All right? It's it's okay. Um, you know, if it's you know, that's fine and that way you won't have to worry about that because people know. Okay? Okay. okay. And, my, and the next question is just You said you just had one. I do, but okay, well maybe it's not a question. Go ahead. It's just when you um next week, I mean the next time when we come and you say you're going to be helping us with questions, could you, I just wanted to make sure that I would ask you this time, could you cover if people c- try to come to the group at, let's say the group started at 8 and we got to do the hour of the lecture, but we notice they keep coming in at 9. Yeah. And they got to come for the part 8. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We'll talk about how to handle that up front and, and how to give it time. and how, Yeah. Okay. So good. All right. Was that? Right. Right. No, that's right. That's right. I'm, you know, yeah. Well, amen. I mean, I'm one. If you've been here a length of time, you know, I'm one. I don't just rush in, and um, God and Pastor Aisha balances me out because I can be, you know. But that, you know, she's really rubbed off. But what I do is I submit to God in terms of a, uh, you know. I mean, this deacon program, we put a lot of time and effort, didn't we? I have a Energy. question. Who's in here read our bylaws? Who's read the bylaws? Well, outside of. Y'all, y'all board, board members. members. We had to. Nobody, us wonderful. That's great. Praise the Lord. Not meaning I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> so, does but, everybody know they can? Ha- they have access to the bylaws when they become a member. Really? 
we tell you that in new members. You just forgot. Okay. But um, you can you can get there, the bylaws are sixty what, sixty four pages. They're lengthy. 